President Biden has appointed Office of Management and Budget Director Shalanda Young and White House Senior Advisor Steve Reschetti to engage in negotiations with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy's proxy in order to prevent an imminent default on U.S. debt payments. The nation is on the brink of hitting the existing debt ceiling on June 1, and economists widely agree that failing to raise the spending limit would have catastrophic consequences for the U.S. Meanwhile, McCarthy and his Republican colleagues are demanding that President Biden reduce spending on initiatives that fund his top priorities as a condition for raising the debt ceiling. Despite the delay in appointing Young and Reschetti, their selection has been applauded by Senator Kirsten Sinema, an independent from Arizona, Economy and Ordinary Americans. Sinema expressed her approval in an interview with Politico, stating that it was a positive move, even though it would have been better if it had happened earlier. She believes there is still enough time for an agreement to be reached, but that it would not have been possible with all the other parties involved. Now, let's take a closer look at the two individuals chosen by President Biden to navigate the current impasse. Shalanda Young is a distinguished public servant who was appointed by President Biden in 2021 to lead the Office of Management and Budget. She is the first black woman to hold this position. Prior to her current role, Young served as the Deputy Budget Director and Acting Director of the agency, where she was responsible for overseeing the federal budget. During a May 2022 event for the Partnership for Public Service, a nonpartisan nonprofit organization, Young expressed her commitment to serving the American public and shared President Biden's goal of restoring trust in government. She emphasized the importance of making evidence-based decisions and preventing improper political interference. Before joining the Biden administration, Young worked at the House Appropriations Committee for over a decade, where she oversaw annual appropriations bills and played a key role in drafting proposals to address critical issues such as the federal shutdown in 2018 to 2019, disaster aid, and COVID-related spending. Young's impressive track record garnered praise from lawmakers across the aisle, with Senator Lindsey Graham commending her during her confirmation hearing for her current position. Steve Reschetti, the counselor to President Biden, brings extensive experience from his tenure in both the Clinton and Obama administrations. He joined then-Vice President Biden's staff in 2012 and later served as chairman of Biden's 2020 presidential campaign. In his early days in Washington, Reschetti worked as a legislative aide for President Bill Clinton. Reschetti has been instrumental in brokering deals on legislative packages that form significant aspects of President Biden's domestic policy agenda. His involvement in negotiating the $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill, passed by Congress in 2021, has been particularly noteworthy. According to the New York Times, Reschetti has also provided support to President Biden beyond the realm of politics, as reported by individuals close to both men. On the Republican side, Rep. Garrett Graves of Louisiana was chosen by McCarthy to represent the party in the debt ceiling negotiations. Similar to Young, Graves is a native of Baton Rouge. He currently resides there with his wife and three children. Graves chairs the Aviation Subcommittee on Transportation and has gained recognition for his use of technology to enhance efficiency within the federal government. Colleagues describe Graves as a policy wonk and Capitol Hill insider, as noted by NBC News. He has served as a staffer in both houses of Congress for an extended period. While both parties acknowledge that negotiations through proxies have helped move the process forward, it remains uncertain whether the eventual deal will be satisfactory to Democrats, who are concerned about the administration making significant concessions, and to Republicans, who are leveraging the potential default as an opportunity for